Hi, I'm Jay Edidin. And I'm Miles Stokes. And we are here to explain the X-Men. Because it's about time someone did. This week, Logan, which marks Hugh Jackman's final outing as the adamantium clawed Wolverine, opens in theaters everywhere. And we are here today with Sci-Fi Wire to talk about the comics behind the movie. Like its predecessors, um, those being X-Men Origins Wolverine and The Wolverine, Logan draws a lot of its inspiration from a specific comic story. In this case, um, it's an arc of the Wolverine ongoing series written by Mark Millar and drawn by Steve McNiven. The Old Man Logan story arc spanned seven issues and then it concluded um, in a 2009 one-shot called Giant Size Wolverine Old Man Logan. Oh, that one's a mouthful. Right? It just doesn't have the concise grace of, say, Giant Size Man thing. But what does? Anyway, what's the story with Old Man Logan? Okay. Old Man Logan takes place in this dark future where all of the supervillains banded together and just took out all the heroes. Um, and then they took over the world and pretty much sliced it up and divided it between them. Logan is the sole surviving X-Men, and he has long, long since given up his life as Wolverine. He refuses to pop his claws anymore. He won't fight. He's basically become an out-and-out -out pacifist. And in fact, when the story opens, he's a farmer. He's got a wife and two kids, and he's struggling to raise the funds to pay off his landlord. He's just about given up hope when a figure from Logan's superhero past shows up with a really lucrative offer. Join him on a road trip across dangerous supervillain-controlled America to deliver a piece of super super dangerous contraband. Now, from what we've seen of the Logan, the movie, trailers, the feel of the movie seems like it's going to be pretty similar to the feel of the comics. I mean, first off, we have the grim and gritty, dust bowl, old west looking setting. We have an aged Logan going on a cross-country road trip for a very specific reason. And of course, we have lots and lots of super murdery, carnage violence. That said, don't expect a direct adaptation. First of all, the Old Man Logan comics are rooted really heavily in the larger Marvel Universe. The movies, which um, are Fox properties, have to use only characters and concepts that originate in the X-Men books. So for example, unfortunately we're probably not going to see Wolverine teaming up with Hawkeye to go on a road trip in the Spider-Mobile, which is what happens in the comic. It's so great. On the upside, that also means we're not going to see Deliverance played out Hulk style. Another one of the more memorable, bit, memorable bits of the original Old Man Logan story. That one's probably for the best. So, since Fox doesn't have access to the more Avengers-y types of properties, they've replaced them with more X-specific stuff. Most notably, instead of an old Hawkeye teaming up with Old Man Logan on this road trip, we have an extremely, extremely old Professor Charles Xavier. Can you imagine going on a road trip with Charles Xavier? He would be the worst. He would be a, he would be a telepathic backseat driver. Oh, God. Logan. Logan, when did you forget to turn signals, Logan? Charles! Did they wipe from your mind the ability to use your headlights properly? <laughs> Logan, you didn't signal that turn. But we digress. Three car lengths, Logan. <laughs> How long has it been since that last car passed you? Not long enough. Anyway... Okay, so anyway, sorry, um, <laughs> the Professor is not Logan's only, nor even potentially his most difficult road buddy. Um, because in the previews, we've seen another character, and this is a young girl. She's got a hell of a chip on her shoulder, and she's got a very, very familiar set of metal claws. And that is Laura Kinney. Oh man, I love Laura Kinney so much, also known as X-23. So she, mer she first made her debut in the animated series X-Men Evolution. She's basically the Marvel Universe equivalent of Harley Quinn or, say, Renee Montoya. So she's a character who started out in a cartoon, became a fan favorite, and very quickly made the jump over to comics. Right. Specifically, she was in a miniseries called NYX, in which she was a side character. It was sort of a street-level, dark and depressing series. Pretty soon after that, though, she was in two of her own miniseries, X-23 Innocence Lost and X-23 Target X. Together, those two miniseries basically make up Laura's origin story. Right. Now, after that, there was an X-23 ongoing series that went on for quite a while. And currently, Laura is headlining in the ongoing series All New Wolverine, which is absolutely superlative. Yes, it's really great. So, as for her story, Laura is a clone of Logan, the original Wolverine. How's that work? So, she was created by a shady government facility which was attempting to replicate the work done by Weapon X, an equally shady, equally government facility which was responsible for coding Logan's skeleton in adamantium and turning him into a killer. Now, when Laura was cloned from his blood sample, the blood sample was damaged. So, the damaged Y chromosome had to be replaced with a second X chromosome, hence Laura Kinney. 
So the point of the program uh, that created Laura was basically to create a more tractable version of Wolverine. He had been trained and conditioned as an adult. Laura, on the other hand, was raised in a lab and basically trained as an assassin from birth. Like Logan, she's gifted with a really powerful healing factor. She's got retractable claws too, and those claws are coated in the same indestructible adamantium that lines Logan's entire skeleton. One of the downsides of a child assassin is you can't really coat a skeleton with adamantium while it's still growing. Suffice to say, after all of that happening to her as a kid, Laura Kinney, X-23, has some pretty serious issues. A little bit. Yeah. So Laura eventually escaped from the lab, um, spent a while on the streets of New York, that's the time on um, the miniseries NYX that you mentioned earlier, and finally she found her way to the X-Men. She's been with them on and off ever since. Uh, following the original Logan's death in 2014, she actually ended up taking on the mantle of Wolverine, and she's still Wolverine now. My personal favorite Wolverine. The best Wolverine. Right? Seriously. Now, how's Laura going to translate to the big screen? Well, pretty loyally from what we can tell, yeah. both in terms of appearance and in terms of concept, she's looking pretty similar. It's definitely a younger version of Laura, but very recognizably the same character. So if we're talking about characters, you know, who first showed up, showed up in the comics and their, their antecedents, I feel like we gotta talk about the villain, Donald mm. Pierce. Right, so in the comics, Donald Pierce is a snotty cyborg with a massive hate on for mutants who sports a glorious fuchsia cape. Now, comic book Pierce is a pretty solid C-lister. He occasionally shows up as the main villain of a series, but... Young X-Men. Yeah, he, but he, he just doesn't have a lot going for him, and I'm really interested to see how he's gonna work as a solo antagonist, especially one set in opposition to as, as sort of defining and strong a character as Logan. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to take our word for it, as the saying goes. If you want to check out the comics, here's where to look. The original Old Man Logan story was printed in Wolverine Volume 3, numbers 66 to 72, and wrapped up in giant size Wolverine Old Man Logan. Now, there is a similar version of the character who's running around currently in the ongoing series Old Man Logan. He's uh, based on Millar and Niven's version, but transplanted from a different universe. His, his adventures are probably less directly pertinent to the film, but if you like the character and want to keep following him, that's where to find him. For everything you need to know about Laura Kinney, I would personally recommend checking out the X-23 Innocence Lost and X-23 Target X miniseries. Those are the ones that are going to be most directly relevant to this movie, from what we can tell. That said, Laura as a character really hits her stride in her first ongoing series, in the X-23 ongoing, when it's being written by Marjorie Liu in particular. And honestly, you know, if you like the character, you can follow her through that, and definitely, definitely look up the current all-new Wolverine. It is absolutely delightful, and it's, it's honestly one of my favorite current X books. Yeah, I would completely agree. And if you want another deep dive, or a few hundred deep dives, into X-Men continuity, check out our podcast, Jay and Miles Explain the X-Men. You can find that at explainthexmen.com, also on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play. Thank you so much to Sci-Fi Wire uh, for teaming up with us to produce this video, and to our hosts, uh, Books with Pictures in Portland, Oregon. It's been a pleasure working with you. In the meantime, enjoy Logan. <laughs>